Hello and welcome to Mr West tutorial on how to make a steady hand game. What are we going to need? Well, we're going to need a micro bit. There's my micro bit. We're going to do all our coding on the micro bit, uh, which will use Code Kingdom's JavaScript to do that. We're also going to need a battery pack. We've got a battery pack there, and in there I've got two batteries that are already, already in there, ready to go. Uh, we're going to need a USB cable so that we can code our micro bit and flash it over whilst we're testing it. And we're also going to need some more bits and pieces that you won't normally use. First of all, we're going to need a box. This is going to be the box for our actual steady hand game. And I've got a cat food box, an empty one. There we go. And the reason I've got this one is because what we can do is we can have our steady hand game on the top. And, but when we come to program it and come to actually make it, what we can do, it's quite easy to open it and get access to the electronics on the, on the inside, which is useful. We can always use some Velcro or something just to hold that later on and make sure that's nice and steady. So we're going to need a box. We're also going to need some two millimeter solid single core wire. Okay, well, there we go. If you look now, this here, you can buy it off the internet direct is to two millimeter single core wire, or you could do like I did, and you can go down to uh, your local hardware store, like Wilkinson's, and if you get the two mil, what's called twin and earth cable, this here is 75p a meter or 80p a meter thereabouts, and you could probably get three or four, maybe even six, uh, yeah, maybe even six of your your steady hand games out of a meter. So that's really, really cheap. All you do, if you do get it like uh, here, all you need to do is you um, get some snips, snip there or some scissors, be careful, don't chop your hand off, pull the wires apart and it will separate into three cables. You'll have one cable that won't have any anything on, that'll be your earth cable. And then you'll have two other cables, probably a brown and a blue cable. They'll have some uh, shielding on them, some insulation on them. You can use some wire strippers to, uh, to strip that off. I've got some wire strippers here. There we go, they're really, really useful. Great piece of kit. Uh, if not, you can use, you could probably use snips or something else, but uh, get some to help you to don't chop your hand off. There we go. So we've got the cable. And that's gonna be the main cable that we use um, that does the actual uh, maze that we've gotta get through. We're also gonna need some of these pipe cleaners. If you haven't got pipe cleaners, that's fine. You can use normal multi-core cable, or you could even just use a little bit of single core cable on the end of some crocodile clips. Whatever, it doesn't matter what you use, it's, it all works the same, as long as you've got something. I'm just doing what I've got available at home. I had some spare for some reason, so here they are, I'm gonna use those. Uh, and if you haven't got crocodile cl clips with the actual cable themselves, like this, probably need three or four of those, then you can actually buy these crocodile clips that just go on the end and you can attach them to the end of it. So you're going to need those. You're also going to need a resistor. There's my resistor there, a little resistor. You're supposed to use a 10,000 ohm resistor um, for this for this circuit, but you can get away with something a bit smaller. I've only got a 500 uh, ohm resistor, so it, work, it still works. So those that's the kit that we need. Uh, that's the essential stuff. Also, optional equipment. We're also going to need, uh, I, you could do with some primer, depending on how you're going to decorate your box, you're going to need some primer to spray it. Or you can use some spare wrapping paper, if you've got wrapping paper or, or just A4 paper, and you can glue it on. So you probably need some glue or sellotape or other bits and bats, depending on how you're going to make your project work. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to decorate our box. And uh, the reason I'm doing this first is because I'm going to use this uh, spray part primer here from uh, Wilkinson's, it's quite cheap. Uh, I'm going to use that. Each coat, you're going to take two coats and each coat takes about 15, 20 minutes to dry. So it's a good idea to spray this first and then go away and do, uh, do the rest of your coding, make your other bits, and then come back to it once it's dry and do the second coat. Otherwise, if you do all the other stuff first, you're then going to have to spray it, wait 15 minutes, twiddle your thumbs, and then come back and do a second coat. So you can start it off first. So there was my box. There we go. And I put it on some paper here, use my primer, and there is my box, my completed sprayed box. It doesn't have to be perfect because the idea is that later on, when I get time, 
I won't just leave it as a white box. I'll paint it or decorate in some other way. So there's my box. That's the first thing we've got to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to code the micro bit. And the, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to code the micro bit with a piece of testing software. The idea of the testing software is that you set up all your hardware, get it all linked in, and then you run your testing code uh, software and it's just there to make sure that all the circuits, everything's wired up correctly and it's working as intended. So you get your micro bit, plug it into the computer. If you go to the link on the video, you'll see there's a link there to the actual code and copy that code over. And once you've, uh, once you've typed it in, once you've dragged the blocks in, click on compile, drag it onto your micro bit. And then once it's onto the micro bit, it's flashed over, you're ready to start building your actual circuit. Okay, so I've gone and coded the micro bit. That's ready to go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to test the micro bit using, um, before we put it into the actual box, into our actual setup, we're going to test it just out on the table to make sure that we've got all the electronics working properly before we start to put it inside the box, uh, inside, inside of our actual setup. The reason is, is if we do try and put it all inside of here straight away, then what we might find is that something's not quite set up right, and it might be a little bit fiddly to get into here to, to check the circuitry. So get it working outside the box first, and then we put it into the box, and then we test it again. So what does our circuit look like? Well, I've got the uh, here, there's a bare wire. This is my two core, uh, two millimeter wire here. And on the end of it, I've got a crocodile clip. There he is, chomp, chomp. And this crocodile clip is going to go onto the zero pin here on the left hand side. There's the zero pin. So the crocodile clip goes onto the zero pin and the other end just trails loose. This other end is never gonna uh, connect to anything until you touch it with, the, um, with your other wire. So that just goes loose. Then what you do is you need to get another crocodile clip. Here we go. And it goes through the resistor. So you've got crocodile clip, resistor, uh, and on the other side is another crocodile clip. And this connects here to my hoop that is gonna be what I'm gonna guide through the maze. The idea is I guide this through the maze without actually touching the wire. So crocodile clip, there is the uh, there is the resistor, goes through to, and this is what we use to guide it. I'm gonna guide it along like that. And this crocodile clip goes to the ground, which is the GND on the micro bit. So now you've got two parts connected. You've got the zero, which runs through to that cable wire there, and then you've got your ground uh, through the resistor and then to this orange wire here that I've made. Now what I've done here is I've just taken I've uh, taken a pipe cleaner, in fact I took two pipe cleaners, joined them together, and on the end of it there, I actually burnt off the end so that the loop isn't covered with uh, furry bits. When you do burn it, do take care, get, a, get an adult to do that for you. Um, you don't want to do it yourself, because when you do light it on the hob or whatever you're going to use, it will start to burn, and it will carry on burning until you blow it out. Also, is in order to get this in order to get this wire here completely clean, you've got to hold it over the hob for a bit. It does go red hot, which means if you touch it, you, you're going to be unhappy. You're going to, you're going to have a bad day. So, here we go. So there we go. So there's our hoop. And the idea is that we, we put it through the hoop like that, and we don't want to touch it. But we're going to test it first. So that goes there. There's only one more thing to do now. Um, we need another wire, one more crocodile clip. And this one goes, this time, from, from the not from the ground end, but from the other side of the resistor onto the, um, like this side of the resistor here with the, the hoopy wire. It goes from the hoopy side of the resistor and onto the three volts. So three volts straight through to the hoop side of the resistor. Don't put it straight onto the ground because then you've connected three volts directly through to ground and you're going to blow your pie most likely. It will, it will break because that will short circuit um, if you do it with the batteries, you might get away with just ruining your batteries, with flattening your batteries. If you do that whilst it's plugged into the computer, the chances are you're going to permanently damage your micro bit. So we've connected all the bits up, all of our micro bit here. We've got the both wires ready. It's everybody connected. We're about ready to plug in the battery. Before we plug the battery in, 
Now is a good time to stop and get somebody else to check and make sure that your wiring is correct. Most importantly is to check that this here, there is not a direct feed from the three volts down to the ground. If there is, you're gonna damage your micro bit. So make sure there's nothing there and make sure it's connected to the other side of the resistor, not that side. Once, you've, uh, once you have got somebody else to check it and it's all okay, now what you can do is you can plug in the actual micro bit battery pack. Here we go, and that'll just go into there. And as you can see, there we go, it's got an X, so it's not connected, it's not connected. There's no circuit that's been made which is great. So now what we do is, in order to test it, we get our hoop and just touch the hoop against the wire. And as you can see, you should be able to see that as soon as it touches it, it changes from an X to a tick. There we go, X to tick, X to tick. If that doesn't happen, if it's not working, now is a good uh, idea you need to stop and you need to check your electronics and make sure it's all connected. Make sure everything's wired up to the right place. Also, you might wanna check inside of here Make sure that there's no short, um, there's no breaks anywhere in, where they're hidden, where it's insulated. But if it is all working, perfect. What you could do is unplug the micro bit, and now you can put it into your box. And here we have our finished steady hand micro bit game. So I programmed it so that when you press the A button, it displays a smiley face, and it's given it gives you three lives. So you've got three attempts to get from here right through to the end. Each time you touch the side, it displays a um, sort of neutral face and then it you reduces your number of lives by one. So we start on three. Let's see if I can get across. Here we go. If I touch it, it goes to the neutral face and says two. Touch it again, goes to neutral face to one. Touch it again, it goes to zero and displays the sad face and then says game over so that's our finished game let's have one last try let's see if i can get all the way to the end so i press the reset oh one life Oh, and I've failed. Never mind. See if you can do better.